So we're going to look at a few more examples um, where we use this definition here, um, defining the derivative as a function, to, to determine derivatives for, for a few functions. Um, and here we're going to start with this rational function. We saw a couple of videos ago as an example of the polynomial function. We worked that out. We did a little bit of algebra. We got the result. Um, here we have to work a little bit harder because the rational function makes things a little bit more complicated. But we can still do it. So first off, the first step is always to just write out the definition. Right. It's always a very good idea in calculus or any math course for that matter to make sure you know your definitions really well. And if you're faced with a problem where you're not sure what to do, if nothing else, write down definitions for all the terms that show up in the problem. You're bound to get some partial credit for at least knowing your definitions. Um, the other reason is now that we've got that definition down, we can start working out. Well, what does this mean? Well, let's see. Under the limit, h going to 0, f of x plus h. So remember, um, f of x plus h means we take x plus h and we plug it in for x in the formula for f of x. So x appears here. So this x gets replaced by an x plus h, and then plus 1 in the denominator, okay, minus f of x, which is just 1 over x plus 1, whole thing divided by h. Now, um, one of the things that makes this tricky is you've got this compound fraction, right? Um, the numerator is a difference of two fractions, the and then we have this additional denominator. We have this h. A lot of people are going to get themselves mixed up. There's a few things that can happen here to get you mixed up. One is, where does that h go, right? If we're going to simplify things, where does that h belong? And the easiest way to keep yourself from getting into trouble is to remember that dividing by h is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, by 1 over h. So put a 1 over h out front. And then write your remaining fraction. x plus h plus 1. Let me leave myself a bit of room. 1 over x plus 1. OK. Next step. We've got a difference of two fractions. So like any time when you're dealing with a difference of two fractions, if you want to add or subtract fractions, you need a common denominator. And since we're dealing with variables, that denominator is always just going to be the product of the two denominators. So here, I'm missing x plus 1. All right. But of course, anything you do to the bottom, you must also do to the top. Over here, our missing denominator is the other one, x plus h plus 1, x plus h plus 1. Okay, now we're in a position to simplify. So h is going to 0, 1 over h is still out front. Let's get everything over that common denominator. So the common denominator, x plus h plus 1, x plus 1. We have x plus 1 subtract. Here's the next algebra mistake you're likely to make. That minus sign applies to everything over here. Right? So it's minus x minus h minus 1. Right? It's going to hit all three of those terms. And because it hits all three of those terms, we have x minus x cancels. 1 minus 1 cancels. And what are we left with? We're left with, let's come up here, the limit, h going to 0, 1 over h times minus h over x plus h plus 1 
x plus 1, right? And if you want to think of that h as h times 1, and now you see that we can cancel again, right? h over h, right? Those cancel out, okay? And if you weren't careful with that 1 over h, you might have that h in the numerator, and then you might be confused that nothing seems to be canceling, and you're just getting 0 for your answer, right? Because you have h in the wrong place. Um, if you're not careful about the parentheses, you might be missing that minus sign. So there, there are a few pitfalls here. There are a few places where you can go wrong. Um, but now that those h's are gone, we check and we see, well, the only remaining h is this one here. And there's nothing stopping us from letting that h go to 0. So we have the, well, in fact, uh, why not? Minus 1 started to write the limit symbol, so now I'm committed. It's hard to erase on these boards. We let h go to 0, minus 1 over x plus 1 times x plus 1, so x plus 1 squared, and you're done. So this is, of course, f prime of x for the function f of x equal to 1 over x plus 1.